Today, I'm showing you how to make two amazing meads using guava honey. Let's get started. So, if you've watched my channel, you know that I like to take a regular honey, or a rare honey in this case, and do two fun things with them. I normally like to make a traditional because I feel like that honors the honey and the bees and those things. You get the fun flavors of the honey and you get to play with that. And then I like to pair a fruit or spice or some other adjunct with said honey to create a more interesting flavor or profile. So today's honey is guava blossom honey, and it does have some fruitiness to it, which is really interesting. Kind of tropical notes vibe, of course, with the honey floral and all those. I thought after tasting the honey, I was like, of course the traditional is gonna be great. So that's what we have here, sitting on my side. This is the traditional. Oh, there's some other bottles back here. And the flavor that I thought would pair best with this is a more tropical flavor, which is passion fruit. So we have ourselves two recipes, you'll see them on screen today, and I'm super excited to share both of them with you. This mead's actually really easy to make, and uh, I was pretty surprised with how simple it was, even though um, the ingredients might be hard to get. So let's start with the traditional. You need the honey. This is guava blossom honey, as we've talked about. I had to go get that. The traditional started with honey and water and yeast, and we used a pretty basic wine yeast for this one just to keep it a clean fermentation. Um, I didn't want to go with anything too crazy. I just want something to ferment through in a nice way that's not going to blast off a lot of the honey character. So we did that. We used that same yeast for our passion fruit version. The passion fruit started with the honey, water, and yeast, and some frozen passion fruit. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and spoil something a little bit. I think I started with too little passion fruit, but we'll kind of talk about that soon. So anyways, passion fruit went in the primary. The starting gravities for both of these brews are on screen. The traditional is actually pretty low, uh, probably lower than I normally go for a traditional, but that's okay. The passion fruit's also pretty low at you know roughly about 5%, so it's, it's not a very high ABV brew, but that hopefully means it's crushable and uh, that you can have a bunch of them. After we started these and got our starting gravities, pitched our yeast, they fermented, they moved pretty quick, and it took about two to three weeks for them to finish fermenting. I ended up racking them off. I forgot to take a video of this, and so you don't see any video of that right now, but I racked them off using an auto siphon and tubing into new containers, and they sat for a little bit. I did end up stabilizing both of them with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. This allows us to go ahead and back sweeten with the sugar that we want, which is the guava blossom honey in this case. We can do that safely. So they were stabilized, sat for a little bit longer. We then went ahead and back sweetened the passion fruit version with a little bit of that honey. Our final gravity on this, I think is about 10, 10-ish. And so it's got a little sweetness there. Um, and I didn't do anything with like acid balance because we carbonated it. We threw, the, threw it into this keg, force carbonated it with these CO2 cartridges, which I'll put some links to this keg if you're interested and to a kegging video. This is gonna add some carbonic acid through carbonation. So that's gonna get a little bit of that. Um, the traditional, obviously in bottles, and bottles over here too. So it ended up going through a similar process. We back sweetened with some honey. Well, actually, excuse me, we did this backwards. We oaked it. I used some French oak for about four or five days and just kind of put it right in there, let it set, and it gave it some oak character and profile, at which point we racked off of said oak and we went ahead and back sweetened it with more guava blossom honey. The final gravity on this guy is like 1.016, somewhere in that range. And then we went ahead and bottled it, as you saw. These both obviously fermented from their starting gravity to 1.000, stabilized, back sweetened, so they are sweet and we're ready to taste them. So let's go ahead and get a pour of each one. And now a quick word from today's sponsor, Z-Biotics. I'm sure many of you have been like me. You went out, had a fun night drinking and doing all that stuff and you paid for it in the morning because you 
You had a fun time last night. Zbiotics helps with that. Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by a PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in your gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before you drink alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's rest to sleep and feel better in the morning. Zbiotics comes in a six pack in these one half ounce little containers. You can use the QR code on screen or the link or the link in the description to help get a discount on your first Zbiotics purchase. Thank you to Zbiotics for supporting the channel. Go check them out, drink responsibly. So you can see the uh, passion fruit version has a little more uh, foam on top. I think I probably needed to adjust my CO2, my serving pressure here. I didn't do that before, so. It's got a little bit of a uh, foam, which is not bad. It means it's carbonated for sure. The traditional, it's right here. They're both pretty dang clear. The traditional's not as clear as I'd like, but that's okay. I did attempt to clear them, or pretty much clear them, with at least the traditional with Chitosan and Kisasol, which are, um, basically clearing agents you can use post fermentation drops all of the particles out and allows you to clear the brew so let's go ahead and start with the base honey version which is the guava traditional with oak all of those things here we go that nose is so interesting it's got such a tropical note like honey is so wild to me that it the honey itself can produce so much flavor and in general you know adding like a tropical guava note just on the nose is so cool. Get that oak, which is like a rounding, hugging kind of effect. This is gonna be lighter uh, ABV, but also probably in body with it being only 7%. So just good to note. Here we go. Yeah, the body's pretty light. Oak in there, in there is a very, again, rounding kind of effect. Adds a nice little layer on top. Adds some complexity too. The acid balance on this is pretty low. I'm sure I could have sprinkled maybe a little like citric acid or maybe malic acid. I'd probably go citric in with this to adjust the balance some. Yeah, it is kind of thin, I will say. So kind of to be expected at 7%. With, it, with this being that low, it's not going to have a lot of body. The oak helps some, but that's okay. Other than that, that guava honey is pleasant. It is super fun. I really enjoy just the honestly the complexity of it, but also simplicity of the uh, fruitiness. Yeah, I could, I could down, and I will down this whole glass. So, super good. Let's switch over to the passion fruit. Again, this one's not very clear. I didn't really try very hard to clear this one, honestly, so sorry. Passion fruit right on that nose. Brightness. It's cold, so it's a little harder to get. Oh, that smells good. All right, here we go. Let's taste it. Oh yeah. Surprisingly though, I, I tasted this before just to kind of see what it was like out of the keg. Passion fruit was pretty light. It's still light. I think I might um, adjust my recipe and you'll have seen the adjusted recipe card to double. So what you saw on the recipe was card was probably half of what I used. Sorry, double what I used. It's crisp. The cold definitely helps make it more crispy tasting and feeling. Carbonation's there. The guava honey essence is there at the bottom, at that bottom of like the pyramid. And then you have like on the top, the passion fruit like I'm talking about, which is nice. I would double it though, cause I want more passion fruit. I want more in my face. Hey, this is a passion fruited mead. Man, that's good though. Both really crushable. Acid balance is a little more um, sharp on this guy because of the fruit because of the carbonic acid. So I think that does help the crispy side, which is interesting. Here's a little science test to see if I'm correct. This is citric acid. I'm just gonna basically take a small sprinkle and sprinkle it into this glass. Give it a little swirl. 
Citric acid is brighter. It's the brightest of the three main acids you can get, being citric, malic, tartaric. Citric is generally what's found in lemons and limes, so it adds that bright note. Malic is found in pears and apples and fruits like that. Um, then the tartaric acid is normally found in grapes and those kind of varieties. So if you think about acid balance there, that's kind of what you're getting. The citric here should add a little bit of brightness. Dang it. That does, it has just the smallest amount of zing on there. Dang it, man. Well, I don't, I'm not gonna go open these bottles and throw some citric acid in, but a little citric acid has helped, the, has helped these kind of have some more um, interesting character, more rounded between your sweetness, acidity, and tannin, which is uh, a topic I've talked about quite a bit on the channel, and balancing a brew. You get all three there now. Should have done that. You can learn from my mistake here, and I hope you do. So this has been a guava honey mead experience. I have literally dozens of other traditional meads that have been made with those varying honeys in the world uh, with pairing recipes. So I love to get to do this and I hope that you will go and check out all of the other channel videos I have there, traditionals and recipes. I've got lots of silly recipes of dumb things I've done and I also have lots of tutorials on how to make mead. If you're watching this, you are probably somewhat experienced in making mead, but I still encourage you to go try a recipe I do want to challenge us. I like to do these new challenges. They're kind of fun. Let's see if we can get this video to like 200 likes. I don't feel like that's too many. So hit that uh, like button. If you haven't subscribed, please do. At this current moment of recording, we are still on the road to 50,000 subscribers. So we might be there by the time this is posted. If not, feel free to hit subscribe and join us for a 50K celebration. This has been a fun, new meat experience for me. I am absolutely gonna go buy some more of this honey and play around with it. I've got a combination of other hum honeys in there ready to go. So I hope to see you in a future video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you would make with some guava honey and I'll see you next time. Cheers.